It's Joe from Lucas with Basil. We call him Basilonian. Anyways, <laughs> hey guys, we're gonna have some fun today. Right, we wanna constantly bring you new things and really get you an understanding of teach on things. Baz, that's what we call him for short, he's, right now, he's focusing on sake and really becoming an expert on it for the store. And uh, I've been drinking it, so I always thought I was an expert because of that, Baz. But he's <laughs> actually gonna be the real expert. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about these we're gonna try and give you some understandings of them, especially when you try and pair them with food, which I think is amazing. I mean, sake's an amazing spirit. I t have a tendency to look at some unfiltered, but we got kind of a bunch, and we're gonna talk about them. But remember, when you have sake, you never pour your own, right? You're always supposed to pour your other person's drink, and someone's supposed to pour your drink. That's just, it's good luck when you're, when you're drinking sake. But let's go right into sake and talk about juice box sake. It's the best when it's from a juice box. <laughs> All right, lay this on me. Tell me about this. What are we sitting with right here? Sure. So this is the Oni Kuroshi. This is going to be a futsushu. This is kind of going to be your standard grade sake. If you go to the bar in Japan, this is what you'd be getting on tap, basically. It's going to be, you know, a little more... Uh, you know, crisp, a little sweet, so it's nice and accessible. This is just going to be kind of your everyday sort of sake. So, so as we're going through this video, let's not look at these bottles for a second and our juice box. And let's just talk about, give me the level of sake. So, this one's Futsutsu, like I just said, your draft. Uh, the next one over here is going to be a Nigori, that's your unfiltered style. Uh, right here is going to be just a Junmai, um, which is going to be a pure rice where they don't add any sort of uh, distilled alcohol to it during the process. Okay. Um, this guy is going to be a Junmai Ginjo. So notice I said Junmai again, so this is that pure rice again. Ginjo is going to be a specific uh, yeast style that they use that's going to make it a little more fruity um, as opposed to a little more savory. And then we got the Dai Ginjo on the end. These are kind of the top grades. They're going to be the fullest, the just nicest ones that they do. Thank you for explaining it that way. So remember those, I can't pronounce them. I try so hard, okay? So we'll get Baz when you come in for some sake. And then the other thing that I know about sake and when I learned my sake, is it sweet or dry? Yep. And there's, there's a lot of grids on sake. You can't see it from this film, but on the back of a lot of the labels or our shelf talkers, you'll see sweet to dry. So this right here, we could take this if we're gonna have a little, can we have this with some food? What can we have this with? Definitely. Um, the thing with sake, um, as far as the food's concerned, usually you just have it with sushi is what you know the conception is, but it's actually a lot more versatile than say actually wine when it comes to pairing. Um, so you can pair this with a lot of other stuff. It's actually very food friendly all across the board. Um, specifically, you know, you could have you know, Asian food is the first go-to, but you know, anything that can hold a little sweetness, spicy food would be good with this. But really, when it comes to sake, you have a lot of options you can do. So can I use a sake and have like a burger? You could. I want people to know that because this is a category we don't tap into. Too often we do talk about having it with sushi. I have mine with sushi, but you can actually have it. This is, if you're going to a concert, how about have it with a little Dave Matthews? Okay, that's just a thought, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, that's, it's that crisp, it's easy, this is an easy drinker, got a little straw. I'm okay with that, I really am. All right, let's go on to, and let's go on to this one. What are we talking about right here? This is, now, so everybody understands, unfiltered. Let's talk a little bit more about what unfiltered means, okay, because I like unfiltered. I think it has a lot of flavor, but why? Well, you know, it's because you're leaving the rice sediment in when you're doing the fermentation on the sake. You're having the rice kind of broken down and fermented um, into alcohol. Um, but when you're going to the next step, usually you're going to filter out a lot of the sediment. Um, in the case of a nigori like this, yes. yeah, you're going to leave that in. It keeps, gives it a little more texture. You know, it's nice, nice milky and full. And um, you're also going to have, since, you know, you have basically the fermented up uh, rice r r residue, uh, it's going to be a little bit sweeter too. So, you know, if you want something a little fuller, a little sweet, Nigori's are great for that. So, so let's talk a little bit about, I, I always like to bring my experiences back when I'm in a restaurant and I order these products. So I like the unfiltered. Um, I definitely want it at a cooler temperature. I want it cold, okay? But, so we could stop for a second, 
can you heat up sake? I want everybody to understand this because certain sakis, can you heat them up? You can, generally, at least, you know, in Japan, what they tend to do is like this level of sake, your draft sake that you go to the bar for, this is usually what you'd be uh, heating up. And usually the nicer the sake is, usually you want to have it uh, cold. Um, not too cold though, because you know, if it's too cold, it constricts a lot of the flavor. So if you're having your daiginjo or something that has a lot of complexity, too much cold constricts that, you're not gonna get the full experience from it. So usually it's kind of like this guy or maybe this guy, but not your high grade stuff. And you know, anything that's got complexity you, you know, want. It's interesting. And there's a few bottles we carry on the shelf that you actually could warm. We could tell you how you warm them. You know, as we leave winter, it's time to have some chilled sake and have a little bit of fun. Okay, so we go from this, okay, which I know is sweeter and it's really full and I love that. What do we got going on here? What's what's in this one? So this is the Living Jewel. Um, this one's going to be a Junmai. So I, I mentioned the Junmai, how that's going to be a pure rice. When they uh, usually are, it's one of the last steps when you're making sake, you'll add, um, you know, a distilled alcohol to it. Usually what that will accomplish is that it's going to dry it out a bit, reduce the sweetness and make it a little crisper. So since is that a neutral grain spirit they're putting in here? Um, I'm not sure what the specific uh, type of spirit is. Um, all I've all I've learned so far is it's a you know distilled high proof spirit that's just gonna raise the ABV a bit and give it a little bit more sharpness. So I'm gonna find that out. I think it's yeah. always something we want to learn. We want to understand. You know, there's so many products out there that you have a ch choice to buy from, and how do we get them right for your fear, your food? Get a great experience. I want you to have a great experience. This is delicious though. It is. So since you have, um, since this is that Junmai, um, it's, but it's not a Ginjo, like I mentioned, these guys are both Ginjos. This guy's going to uh, be a little bit more full, a little more savory style, because uh, when you don't add that alcohol, you make it, or you allow it to still have a little bit more fullness to it. Um, the so. fullness is, can it be also weight? viscosity or chewiness. Yes. I want everybody to try and understand all these terms because, you know, I want the terms to be a layman. I want you to always be able to understand what we're talking about. Always shoot something on one of these videos too. Put it at the bottom, say, hey, explain this to us and we'll do it. And we'll, we'll try and do it better. We'll go out and research it. We'll understand it. It makes us better too. All right, let's go on to this big guy right over here. Yeah. Because I want to drink this one. So <laughs> let's, uh, We'll get, we'll get along to it. Um, so yeah, this guy here is going to be the Junmai Ginjo. So these are both Junmais. They both have that lack of uh, alcohol added to them at the end. Okay. Um, since this is Ginjo, they're going to use a specific yeast strain that's going to emphasize the fruity and floral notes. So you're going to get less savory, less, uh, sometimes you get cereal or lactic notes as well. This is going to be definitely a little bit more of a kind of fruit forward style. Um, still dry, um, it's got some nice, you know, melon notes, a little bit of pear as well, but you know, it's nice and easy going for that. You know, I want to jump in, I want to share this with you. Has anybody ever had a bottle of wine, a, uh, a sake, a beer, anything, and they said, I don't like beer, I don't like sake, I don't like wine. There's so many different ones we're talking about, and that's what I want everybody to understand. The category is gigantic, right? It goes from sweet to dry, from savory to fruity. I mean, and, and what happens is we've got to really identify on what your palate is, and that's why we got guys like, like the Bazman over here that is an expert in this stuff, and, and everyday learning. We learn every single day. All right, let's go on to this guy. All right. So this guy I truly enjoy. This is just a big sake. And I, and I truly enjoy it, but tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, so this is the Dai Ginjo. Um, the Dasai is the name of this one. So Dai Ginjo just basically means big Ginjo. So it's a, like, I don't want to say double strength, but bigger. I'm going to change my name to that. Say that again. Dai big Ginjo. Ginjo. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to get the most complexity out of this okay. one. Dai Ginjos are typically your top grade of sake, so you can expect all the nicest ones to be labeled as Dai Ginjos. So let me explain that. So <laughs> grades of sake, again, I want everybody to keep on learning these things. What does the grade of sake mean? Um, it's really amount of, amount of complexity and also how much of the uh, rice is going to be milled when you're uh, kind of grain, or grading it down during fermentation. Okay. Get, get the core of the rice. When so this is the most expensive one to make? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. So, and, um, so on this guy, I get kind of a little bit more of a, uh, 
you know, savory emphasis. I get a little bit of kind of spice too, which I personally just like spice in general. There's so. a lot of earth on this one as well. Yes, yes. So that's where that body and that long palate comes. That's why I think this is delicious. But again, if you want something lighter, fruitier, we change. This is great for a concert. You know, there's so many different things in this category. What I like about this category too is there's a lot of small format, so you can just try it, right? I could take it home, I could have it with some food I'm having tonight. You know, whether it's a hamburger, a steak, you know, things we don't think we'd have it with. Would you have it with a, a pasta dish? You could. Um, I, had, I had a sake with a uh, red pesto uh, pasta just a couple weeks ago. It was really good. So I think that's something to really understand. This is a category we're all not used to. Let's learn it together. Let's have some fun with it. We got small format. Let's try them out. Don't Make sure you come in and ask for this guy. He knows them. And remember, always, thanks for shopping at Lucas. One bottle at a time. We truly appreciate your business. You guys have an amazing week.